Abel Clemens was an American murderer known for killing his entire family in late 1805. Abel Clemens and his family lived on the lands of Colonel George Jackson, about one half mile outside of Clarksburg, West Virginia. Clemens lived with his family in an affectionate manner and they bore the character of honesty and industry. As of the fall of 1805, he was about 33 years old, built strong, of fair complexion, light-haired, and had lost some of his front teeth. In the weeks prior to the murder of his family, he was observed to be gloomy and melancholy, presumably due to great anxiety for the welfare of his large family. He was the father of five daughters, two sons, and an infant of unknown gender. A niece occasionally stayed in the home. For some time, Clemens had planned to remove himself to Ohio. On November 10, 1805, in Clarksburg, West Virginia, Clemens murdered his pregnant wife and eight children with an axe. The Virginia Argus, in a letter composed by John G. Jackson, George Jackson, William Tate, and Elias Stilwell, stated Clemens had killed them while they were asleep in three separate beds in the same room. A man named Neasley, who purchased a part of Clemens' crop, went early in the morning to the Clemens house. Finding Clemens in a state of agitation and insanity, he assumed the family was asleep. He saw the niece, who had no knowledge of the killings, although she had been present in the house. Neasley left the home, unsuspicious of what happened. A brother of Clemens, who lived some miles away and had plans to move with him to Ohio, visited his home and found the oldest boy dead in his bed. He ran to alarm his neighbors, while Clemens fled. Neighbors gathered in and found what the Argus described as, a scene most shocking to relate, the wife and an infant in one bed, four daughters in another, and two boys and a girl in a third bed. The story was published by Joseph Campbell of the Monongalia Gazette, which became an early horror classic. After committing the murders, he hid in a cliff of rocks on the north side of the town, but surrendered after a few days. Clemens, who was taken into custody in early December 1805, pleaded not guilty at his Morgantown trial in May 1806. He was found guilty and hanged from a locust tree near Decker's Creek in the town on June 30, 1806. A 1910 local history book opined that Clemens was likely insane, but that was not a valid defense at the time. George Jefferson Hassel was an American serial killer and mass murderer who killed his wife and eight children, ranging in age between 1 and 21 years old, on December 5, 1926, in Farwell, Texas. He also killed his wife and three stepchildren in 1917 in California. Hassel was born in Smithville, Texas, the youngest of seven children. After his brother Thomas died from being kicked in the head by a mule, he married his brother's widow, Susan Ferguson of Oklahoma. According to Hassel, his mother died in 1901 and his father died in 1905. Believing his stepmother had poisoned his father, Hassel said he'd planned to kill her and anyone with her, but said I got too much whiskey and didn't use any gun. Hassel also said he served prison time for embezzlement. On the night of December 5, 1926, Hassel and his wife argued over him raping and impregnating Ferguson's underage daughter Maudie, who was Hassel's own niece as well as his stepdaughter. Hassel proceeded to strike his wife in the face repeatedly with a ball-peen hammer. After the murder of his wife, he moved between each member of the family's bedrooms, using a straight razor and stockings to kill them, in order from youngest to oldest. He woke the two eldest boys, and a scuffle ensued, ending with Hassel killing them with a shotgun and an axe. All of the bodies were then stored in the newly dug root cellar by the house. The eldest Hassel son, Alton, was threshing weed in Clovis, New Mexico, for extra money and was not supposed to come home for another four days. Hassel decided to wait for him. In the meantime, he cleaned up the blood and buried the bodies. When Alton returned, Hassel told him that the family had gone to shallow water, Texas, to visit an aunt. The two men killed a chicken and cooked dinner, and then went to their respective bedrooms. Hassel later said he needed to drink whiskey to work up the nerve to kill again. After getting drunk, he grabbed the shotgun, went to Alton's bedroom, and shot him in the head as he was sleeping. The Victims 
Susie, age 40. Alton, age 21. David, age 15. Madi, age 13. Russell, age 11. Virgil, age 7. Johnny, age 6. Nanny Martha, age 4. And Samuel, age 1. Hassel claimed that he and his family were returning to Oklahoma and sold all of their belongings in a large yard sale. During the auction, a wagon ran over the sinkhole and aroused the suspicion of law enforcement. Soon afterward, Hassel unsuccessfully attempted suicide and excavations revealed the remains in the root cellar. He also confessed to the murder of the members of his other family in 1917, Marie Vogel and her three adoptive children, two of which were adopted from Colorado, a boy eight, a girl five and an infant one. They were living under the family name Baker in Whittier, California. Hassel said he killed his common-law wife and three children during an argument over whether he would join the army to fight in World War I. His confession was corroborated after he directed the police to the location of the bodies. Hassel said he confessed to the earlier murders to ensure no one was wrongfully accused of committing them. After Hassel confessed, a short trial was convened, and Farwell and its sister city of Texaco, New Mexico, took on a carnival atmosphere. He was only tried for Alton's murder. During his trial, Hassel claimed the initial murders were a spur-of-the-moment crime and that he couldn't stop. A psychiatrist declared Hassel sane, and he was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. At the time, death row for men and the execution chamber were both at Huntsville Unit. On February 10, 1928, George Hassel became the 37th man to be put to death in the electric chair in the state of Texas. He is buried at Captain Joe Bird Cemetery. On Christmas Day, 1929, shots rang out across the countryside near Germantown, North Carolina, as Charlie Lawson murdered his wife and six of his children before taking his own life hours later. To this day, no one knows why he committed these terrible acts. Charlie Lawson had been married to Fanny Manring for 18 years, during which time they had eight children, four sons and four daughters. Their third child, William, died in 1920, but the other seven children were still alive on the morning of December 25, 1929. By the evening, only 16-year-old Arthur would remain in the living world. The Lawson family worked as sharecroppers and had finally saved enough to buy their own farm just two years before the tragedy. Not long before that fateful Christmas morning, the whole family went into town to buy new clothes for a family portrait, which would prove to be the last photo taken of them alive. Since new clothes and portraits were unusual luxuries for working-class families of the era, many have since seen this as proof of premeditation on Charlie Lawson's part, perhaps immortalizing his loved ones before destroying them. The bloody crime began on Christmas afternoon, as Lawson's daughters Carrie and Mabel, ages 12 and 7, respectively, were leaving to visit their aunt and uncle. Charlie Lawson lay in wait for them near the barn, and when they drew close enough he shot them both with a shotgun. He then bludgeoned their bodies, presumably to ensure that they were dead. Afterward, Lawson hid the evidence of his crimes in the tobacco barn. From there, he walked back to the house and shot his wife who was on the porch, before tracking down his other four children and killing them one by one. He shot his 17-year-old daughter Marie first, then his two young sons James, age 4, and Raymond, age 2, before beating to death his four-month-old baby Mary Lou. Prior to going on his bloody spree, Charlie Lawson sent his oldest son Arthur into town on an errand. Though his motives for sparing the one child remain as mysterious as his motives for murdering the others. When his family was dead, Charlie Lawson carefully positioned their bodies, arms crossed, with rocks under their heads like pillows. After that, he disappeared into the nearby woods, where he stayed for several hours before shooting himself in the head. By the time Charlie Lawson committed suicide, the bodies of his family had already been found, and several neighbors who had gathered on his property heard the gunshot that ended his life. Charlie's body was found by a tree, encircled with footprints. 
He had been carrying letters to his parents and appeared to have spent some time pacing around the tree before finally deciding to end his life as well. At the time, no one seemed to know why Charlie Lawson would suddenly kill his entire family and then himself. Some believed that a head injury he sustained months prior was the cause, though an autopsy revealed no evidence of brain damage. Rumors swirled that Lawson hadn't actually committed the murders at all, that he was an unfortunate witness to some sort of organized crime, and he and his family were murdered by gangsters to keep them quiet. In later years, a new theory as to the reason behind Charlie Lawson's killing spree surfaced. According to anonymous sources, as well as relatives and friends of the family, Charlie Lawson was suspected of having an incestuous relationship with his oldest daughter Marie, who may have been pregnant with his child. In a 2006 book, The Meaning of Our Tears, the author provided more support for this theory, including a conversation with one of Marie's closest friends, who claimed that Marie had told her that Charlie had gotten her pregnant. There is, however, no official report that would support this supposed pregnancy. Arthur Lawson, the only remaining member of the family, grew up, was married, and had four children. Sadly, he was killed in a car accident in 1945 at the age of 32. There is a small museum dedicated to the Lawson family, located at the Madison Dry Goods Country Store in Madison, North Carolina. The museum sits on the original site of the funeral home where the eight members of the Lawson family who died that fateful Christmas were embalmed. To this day, tourists and locals alike pop into Madison Dry Goods to view newspaper clippings and old photographs of the Lawson family affair. After all of these years, people are still fascinated with that terrible tragedy, says Richard Miller, owner of Madison Dry Goods. The eight Lawsons who perished that Christmas Day, including Charlie, are interred together with lost baby William beneath a single headstone, which bears the melancholy inscription, not now, but in the coming years, it will be in a better land, we'll read the meaning of our tears, and then sometime we'll understand. If you found this video intriguing, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating content.